Okay, I'm going to open the meeting. Just give everybody a chance to get in. Okay. Yeah. Three people we don't see faces. Oh, I see. I turn I put myself on mute. Yeah. I put myself on mute. You have yourself on mute, but somebody else is not on mute, so we're getting a lot of feedback. <laughs> So yeah, if you're not going to be speaking, we request that you keep yourself muted in case there's a lot of background noise because then we have a hard time hearing the person who is speaking. Okay. You ready? We're ready. You want to pledge? Sure. Pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United States, States of America, America, to the Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under God, God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. <laughs> well, there's oh. very good. <laughs> there is. Well done, there that works. The flag. <laughs> Yep, one second. Uh, the 48 hour notice is required under the Open Public Meeting Act. has been met as notice of this meeting was emailed on May 6th and published in the Asbury Park Press, the Co-Star and the Coaster. A copy has been placed on the bulletin board in the borough office and a copy has been filed with the borough clerk. Uh, Mr. Afuso. Here. Mr. Quinlan is not here. Uh, Mr. Correa is excused. Mr. Wade. Here. Mr. Mayor? Here. Ms. Phillips? Here. Ms. Rosenberg? Here. Mr. Fratelli? Here. Ms. Brunell? I saw her, she's muted. She was here. Here. Okay. <laughs> and Chair Rosenberg? Here. And also present this evening, Mark Kittrick, attorney to the board, and Gerald Frieda, board engineer. Christine Bell will not be present this evening. Make an announcement that the Paul and Kim Charette uh, hearing, if anybody is on for that, it's going to be carried till our uh, June meeting, which also at this point most likely will be on uh, Zoom. Zoom. And what's the date of that meeting? June 18th. Thank you. June 18th. Without any further notice. Correct. So we have to make a motion and vote on it? No, we're good. Okay. So anyone who is on for the charrettes, they will be heard on June 18th. Uh, we do not have any correspondence this evening. I did distribute the minutes um, from our special meeting of April 30th. Did everybody have a chance to review them? I make a motion we approve the minutes of April 30th. I second it. Mr. Reed? Uh, Mr. Cretelli? Yes. Ms. Rosenberg? I have to unmute. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, Mr. Russo? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. And Chair Rosenberg? Yes. Uh, we do have two resolutions to be memorialized for the uh, two applications that were approved at our last meeting. Um, the first one is resolution 2020-08, uh, that's approval of bulk variances for Bruce Gary, uh, block 75, lot 13, 204 Evergreen Avenue. Do I have one of those numbers? I'm sorry. Memorialized resolution 2020-08. Do I have a second? Second. 
Ms. Phillips? Yep. Uh, Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Mr. Apuso? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Wade? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes. And Chair Rosenberg? Make a motion to approve resolution 2020-09, vote variance for Ralph, employer Gallo. Second. Uh, Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Mr. Apuso? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Uh, Mr. Patelli? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes. And Chair Rosenberg? Yes. Hearing case zoning board 19-19. Anna Marie Cuter, I have to recuse myself as I'm in the 200 foot radius. The applicant's here? Yes. Yes. Very good. It's up to you, present your case. Okay, so. Hi, I'm Amory Cooter. I live at 309 and a half McCabe Avenue. I've been here since uh, 2014. Hey, Anne-Marie, Anne-Marie, yes? let, let me swear you in, okay? And do you have any witnesses? Sorry? Do you have any witnesses other than yourself? Anybody? Well, I can go get, if you want me to go get somebody to be here with me, you mean? No, oh. no. Your no, architect. no, I just want to know if you were presenting any witnesses. Oh, yeah, I no, no witnesses, but I have my okay. architect, Jeffrey, and my uh, contractor, Jeffrey, well, Jeffrey Irvin and Jeffrey Langsam, who are on here. Okay, so they are witnesses, because so, I just want to swear everybody yes. at the same time. Oh, yes, yes. All right, so if you would raise your right hand, please, and with your witnesses you just mentioned, uh, do you swear from the tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth tonight proceeding? Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that, again, Amory Cooter, 309 and a half McCabe. I've been here since 2014, although I've been obviously down here for many, many years. I have friends over on Ocean Park. Um, looking to build up my garage, which is currently there. Uh, just a studio apartment. I just need some extra square footage. I have a family that comes down in the summer and just to have a couple of beds for them to be, you know, out there. And um, I, I want to be able to have them go, you know, out there. And then I, I don't know what else I need to say, but I know we have a variance for the Eve height, Eve's height and we have a variance for the parking that we need to get approved. Um, the parking in the summer, I can fit at least three or four cars in there. That's not an issue. Um, as far as the eaves height, I don't think if you see the drawings, you see three different units in the back. It's, again, not an issue, but um, that's my, my story. <laughs> Is that the is that the full test full application right there? Yes. Jeff Well, she has witnesses. Right. Yes. Um, my name's Jeff Langsom. Well, uh, hold on. I swear, I swear. Well, if if that's the testimony of the applicant, we need to see if anybody has any questions yes. from the uh, from the public re regarding that testimony. Okay. Any questions from the public? None. Mark. Um, Mr. Cohen has his hand up. Oh. Couldn't see that. Sure. Uh, Thomas Cohen, 612 Third Avenue. Uh, Ms. Cooter, when you purchased the property in 2014, did, did you understand that it was a non conforming lot? No. Did you understand that there's a certain size requirement for a garage apartment? No. Okay, thanks so much. Sure. Anybody else? I'm looking for physical hands. I don't see any and I don't see any virtual hands. 
Hi, I have a question. Of the applicant. I'm sorry? Of the applicant, question to the applicant. Yeah. I live at 305 Brindley Ave, so my yard is, it backs up to her yard. Um, and I was just curious whether that's going on what I think might be a shed or is it, it, is it attached to the house, the, the garage that's attached to the house? Okay, you're on Brindley, so you do not back up to my house. The corner of my yard um, hits the corner of your yard. Yeah, so you are thir three houses in on your street. Um, how could I describe it? I think Lorraine is the next uh, street yeah, over, not, not Brindley. Right. Thanks, Stu. Yeah. I'm sorry, say that again? Lorraine is the next street over, uh, not Brindley, from where McCabe is. Okay, so I got a notice. Um, you're at 505 Central Ave? No. Long application. That's the oh, next okay, application. That's what it is. That's what it is. Okay, I apologize. No problem. Anybody else that's or you want to ask have your witnesses come forward? So then why did they give me this number? Ms. Cooter? Yes. Okay. My name's Jeffrey Langsom. I'm the uh, architect for Ms. Cooter. We are proposing to build a garage apartment above an existing detached one car garage at the rear of a property. This is a permitted use in an R1 residential zone. The footprint of the garage will not be changed. That is 358 square feet. The interior size of the studio apartment will be 282 square feet. Uh, we are proposing to have an interior stair that would start just inside an existing entrance door that would run, run straight up the west side of the garage. Uh, there are several non-conformities on the property. One such as that the property is a narrow lot at 25 feet where the zone requires a minimum of 50 feet. Uh, we have existing building coverage at 41.7% versus 35% allowable. And we have an existing impervious coverage of 7.2% 7, 7 versus 60% allowable. We are requesting two variances for this project. The first one is that we have one existing internal parking space for the garage apartment within the existing garage and two spaces are required for a garage apartment. The second is to have our eave height start at 15 feet instead of 12 feet. The reason for the requested eave height variance is to provide head cl room clearance at the top of the stairs for the small apartment. Uh, we are proposing a 23 foot peak on the roof rather than the, the allowable 25 feet. There are presently uh, rear or back buildings on all the properties adjacent to Miss Cooters. To the west, there is a garage apartment with an eave height of 17 feet nine. To the southwest on Lorene, there's a garage with two apartments with eave heights of 18 feet nine. The south property from her on Lorene has an eave height of 10 feet and a roof peak at 18 feet four, which runs perpendicular to our building. And then to the east of her, there is a raised cottage with the eave height of 10 three and a peak of 14 three. Uh, although, the garage is visible from the bottom of Miss Cooter's driveway. It's barely visible from Lorraine. Uh, as per uh, Mr. Frieder's letter of March 5th, I just want to make a few, a few other comments. Uh, there is presently a Verizon and a JP and L line that power and give internet to the rear cottage at 309 McCabe Avenue. Those lines run over our garage. Uh, Ms. Kuda will uh, have those utilities relocated at the time of the construction. And then from the same areas, they will also feed the garage apartment if it's approved. 
for Verizon and for JPNL. Uh, a note will be added to the plan that the existing curb and sidewalk along the frontage will be replaced if it's deemed to be in poor condition. A note shall be added to the plan stating that the area between the sidewalk and the curb will remain grass. Uh, the applicant has provided proof of taxes and the applicant shall secure any permits required before starting construction. Any questions for this witness? I, I have one if I could. Please. Okay. Um, how many variances did you say you were seeking? Two. Really? No, you need more than two. There are other non-conformities, but we're seeking two. No, 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 no. You need five variances. Right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, five variances. Because you're planning to go up over the structure, so you need variances for the second floor. So if you look at my letter, you'll see it's clear. There's five variances that are needed. Okay. You go to page 304, number seven, number eight, and number nine also have to be included. Seven, eight, and nine. Yes, on the cover sheet of my drawings and on a table that we provided along to owners to the homeowners with notice of the application we talk about the uh side and rear lot requirements that are existing non-conforming that we are going to increase uh that was number nine and number eight Okay, and number seven says the minimum parking spaces is two spaces per dwelling unit and that her driveway is only seven feet wide, which is smaller than a parking space width. Uh, Ms. Kuda has informed me that she has been parking there since she has moved in, has had no issue with parking there. So she you have to provide some testimony. Cut. You have to provide some testimony to the board to that fact. Because technically, you do not have a legal size parking space on the property at all. And you're going to compound that with a garage apartment in the back that will also need two additional spaces. So four are needed. There are none provided unless the board would accept the smaller size one that's there. Then one would be provided to be three short. Well then, if that's the case, then one could be parked in the garage and then one could be parked in the driveway, that would be two. Well, if you do that, you have to have a driveway all the way back, which means your impervious coverage then goes up even more. Mm -hmm. So you need variances for, for that as well. Okay, then we will need a variance for three spots. It, it would be hard for the board to approve um, access to the rear of the property when there's really not enough room for a car on your property. You would have to utilize your neighbor's property to get there. If this is just for, you know, family. It doesn't matter because you okay. can sell the house tomorrow. New people move in and it could be used differently. Okay. Can you put a new driveway with uh, pavers and add to it? I mean, no, just... that makes the, the um, impervious coverage go up and it's still not wide enough. You don't have enough room between the house take... and the property line. Or possibly take some of the pavers out of the drive. You know how people have the grass in the middle of the driveway? I well, mean, that would help. That would help. Higher tracks. That would help, but there's still, you have to address how you're gonna get a vehicle back there. How's a car gonna ride along the edge of the house without hitting the house? 
Well, I mean, we do do it. I mean. Well, uh, you bring cars back into that garage? Well, I, I personally, I've gone all the way up to the end of the house. I haven't gone to the garage, but the previous owners have told me they put their car in the garage all the time, but. Well, you're here looking for a lot of variances on a non-conforming lot. It's really tight there, so you should have a better plan than what you do right now. Well, unfortunately, the, the house is there, and this is how she purchased it, and, this, and the uh, driveway is what is there. She's been using it for several years since she bought the house this way. It doesn't seem to have been any issue with her in terms of having access on there. She hasn't had any issues with her neighbors regarding using it. Well, again, the neighbor sells their property and the new neighbor doesn't want a car traversing their property. I, I understand. I mean, these are things the board has to consider. You're, you're, you're just asking for an awful lot here on a small lot. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, maybe based upon our, um, Mr. Frieda's um, suggestions, maybe it would be um, best for the applicant to come back based upon what Mr. Frieda is saying and in the sense of the board, um, particularly with the parking situation and uh, attempt to address it. Because Mr. Frieda raises a very interesting issue. If somebody came in next door, a new neighbor, and asked to put a fence down the property line, uh, what sort of a situation will we have there? You know, forget about traversing it. What if you actually physically blocked it? Um, you know, and I know there can be some legal questions of is there some sort of a easement or something like that there, but um, it just seems that, that this should be rethought based upon Mr. Frieda's comments. And, and based upon Mr. Frieda's letter. That, that's up to the applicant, as we know. And uh, there may be actually seen some more issues that haven't been brought up yet to bring the whole thing in total, such as the size of the garage apartment. And is it, I, I have a question, is it really a, an apartment? And it, there's other questions. You know, that was brought up in the letter also. So it's about, no, it's, it's, it's a very good point. Um, there is currently a fence there, so the, I mean, it's not like you said okay. there's no fence, but there is a fence there now. But I mean, that's just apparently. Yeah, well, no indication of that right now. I'll be ready. You, you, also, couldn't park, you, know, you couldn't park a car there because you couldn't open the doors. You're also getting into the fact that you need two spots for your car in a garage, and so now. There's no way you're ever going to have two spots for, you know, in the garage. So that's a big, glaringly um, shortfall on property there, you know? I mean, yes, Ms. and that requires a variance. Okay, Ms. Kuda's property is 20 foot, 5 foot wide, and the adjacent property is 25 foot wide. The majority of the, of the lots on the block are 50 feet wide. I'm, I'm and going then, to step out of the meeting for a second. I got a fire truck down my street. Okay. Oh. And that is the property that she elected to purchase, too. Yes. So the, the thing is that it's not like, it's not a block that's full of 20 foot wide, that's full of, that's all 25 foot wide houses. There's a lot of larger houses that have parking, off street parking, that we, what you're saying is legal off street parking versus she's working with a seven foot, seven foot wide mm. space to work with. Are there questions from the board? Well, it's a half a lot, basically, right? Uh, go ahead, Terry. It's a, it's a half lot. It's not a full size lot. So it's like, it's, it's, uh, you know, three or nine and a half. So, you know, you're dealing with a half lot. 
to begin with. And then, you know, you're, you can't expand on that side because I, I believe the other um, homeowner is on the, uh, the gravel that's nearby. So there's no way to make it bigger than seven feet. So I think that is an issue. And if the driveway's full with cars, how do you access the, uh, the apartment? Yeah. Safely. Well, what I'm hearing from comments, I mean, I'm hearing from comments from the board is that they're not really com comfortable with the application as it currently presents itself. So the question to the applicant is, do you want to revisit this and pretend, after listening to comments from the board, do you want to come back at a later date with perhaps some proposed changes to the application as it currently sits? Um, I guess I would have to talk obviously to my architect and construction, but I, I mean, it's from what it's sounding like everybody is saying here on the board that it's, I mean, I'm not going to go through this again and then send out the notices and then, you know, spend more money doing all that. If it's going to be a flat out no, you know, so if you are all in agreement that it's going to be a no, I would appreciate you telling me that, you know, well, no, so, I mean, what so, if you do, what if so it's if like a mother and daughter thing? You know, I mean, you got to be creative. That's what I have. We have a okay. mother and daughter. Now you're talking about, you know, so you got to kind of think of different ideas. It's not that obviously we want you to be happy and improve your property. And, you know, it's good for all of us. So um, just creatively, that's what I'm thinking in my head as an idea. So um, as far as uh, uh, the applicants concerned, uh, if you go forward and there's a denial that runs with the land, right. right? That's a, that's that there's permanency with that. Mm -hmm. So if you decide to have them have the matter carry, consider whether um, you want to revise the plans, um, you can certainly come back or not proceed at a future date. Okay. Jeff, you have anything to add? At this point, I don't. I, we'll have to regroup and then, and then figure out another strategy to go back at it. Okay. All right. So you, you, you'd, you'd, you'd like to have the matter carried? Yes. To a future date? And Christy, what's the date that- we're... Are we going to accept any questions from the public with the testimony that was provided this evening or we're just gonna hold off? I think you should so they can hear everything that is gonna be presented. Yeah, we can we certainly entertain questions from the public. Okay, um, Mr. Colian has had his hand up. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure. Go ahead. Um, sure, Mr. Lagstrom, um, what is the current use of the existing house on the property? One family residence. Uh, how many bedrooms? Four. Four. Okay, great. So, so if this is not approved, you still have effective utilization of this property, do you not? Well, of course. Great. Um, and uh, will, be, will there be any um, testimony as to the negative criteria and the positive criteria? To negative and positive criteria of what? Of the possible granting of the variance. Well, I'm going to, uh, let me uh, interject. I, I understand your question. It's a legitimate question, but if the matter is going to be carried, I think they're going to have the opportunity to present those okay. that testimony then. Okay, great. And I had one other one. Um, is uh, You mentioned these other apartments that were constructed around the site. Um, do you have any uh, idea if those were approved before there was zoning in Bradley Beach or after there was zoning in Bradley Beach? Uh, we do not know that at this point. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh. And to, that, to that point, Mr. Cohen is rearing up and asking some 
very pertinent questions. It's not necessary, but you may want to have legal counsel when you come back to argue those case, to argue those points that you haven't made or are necessary to bring an application forward. So you just got just, just a bit of advice. You don't have to take it, but that you just may want to do that. Thank you. So Christy, any other questions from the public that you see? Uh, not that I see. I don't see any hands up. Let me just check the other. I'm on a split screen here, so no. So what date would we be able to? Um, our June with? agenda is rather full um, because one of the applications from this evening is carried over to June and we have a, a few new ones. Um, so it would be July, but I think that'll give you enough time to regroup as well and get revised plans submitted if that's the route that you choose. Um, our meeting is July 16th. All right, so we would uh, need a motion on that. I have a motion to carry this to July 16th, please. Second. Thank you. Give me one second. That was uh, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Afusa. Correct. I'll second it. Third. Third. <laughs> um, Ms. Brunel? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> carry this to the June, uh, J July 18th, uh, July 16th meeting. I'm sorry. Yeah. Rosenberg? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Fusa? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes. And Chair Rosenberg? He's not participating. He's not. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. So, um, anybody here from the public that's here for this application? Without any further notice, this matter will be carried to our July 16th, 2020 meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Give me one second. I have a few people that I'm I'm letting in, but I'm all yours, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm, I'll take it back now. Oh, that's my name. It's all yours. Hi, <laughs> Smith and Price Residence, Block Forty Nine, Lock Thirteen. Who's representing this case? Um, I believe uh, Mr. Langsam, you are also the architect. No. Uh, no, Richard Villano, he's joining us. We're Sharon and Brian Smith. Okay. Anybody else? <clears throat> Is Mr. Villano with us? I don't can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, great. Thank you. Can you see me? <laughs> is that Richard? Is that it? There's no picture. Yeah, no picture? No picture. No. How about oh, yeah. now? There yeah, you go. Good. good. There you. you go. Okay. So before we begin, um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, um, is Mr. Volano your only witness? Yes. yes. All right. So I'm going to ask Sharon and Brian, along with Richard Volano, to raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm? And also, Mr. Frida, Mr. Frida, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth tonight's proceeding? I do. I do. Thank you. Sharon and Brian, would you like to present your case, please? Sure. Um, we bought the residence, 505 um, Central Avenue, 10 years ago. Um, we had been renting in Bradley Beach most of our adult life, and we wanted to buy something of our own. Um, we wanted it as a summer and weekend home, which is how we've currently been using it, but we always had the intention of making it um, a permanent home, you know, hopefully when in our retirement years. Um, which are approaching. So um, we realized that it, the house is very adequate as a weekend home, but um, to make it a permanent residence, we need to make a couple changes. Um, 
we have three yeah, current, the three we have three veterans right. currently, so but they're they all. Had, they had to wait until they had, like, they were asking. Oh, we had to move the You got a lot of feedback. We have three bedrooms currently, but they're all very small. We, um, they basically just hold a bed. Um, the house is very old and closets have been built into the bedrooms. So we have three very small bedrooms. Um, what we're proposing is we have a small one story um, portion of our house, which is kind of unsound right now. It, um, we think it was maybe a porch at one time that was enclosed. Um, it has a slanting floor. When you walk on it, there's a lot of sponginess. Um, so it's a little bit unsteady. And a very, very small bathroom was added into that space also. Um, what we're hoping to do is take down that structure and place it with a slightly larger structure, but a two-story structure. Um, we would like to have a bedroom on the second floor. And on the bottom floor, we would like to have a small entryway, kind of like a mudroom with a closet, um, build a usable size bathroom and put our laundry area there, bring it up from the basement. And then in addition, we would um, take down the wall between two of the smaller bedrooms to make another usable bedroom. So the, the house would remain a three bedroom um, dwelling. And this is a 2,000 square foot lot? It is, yeah. And it's only, it's 40 feet wide and what's the and 50? No, the depth is 40 feet and the width is 50? I the width think, is 40. I think depth yeah. is 50. Width is 40. Correct. We got width 40 Correct. and 50, so. Yeah. <clears throat> So essentially you're going straight up, right? Correct. You're making okay. that pieces there larger, correct? Increasing yes. the footprint. Increasing the footprint. By a couple of feet. And we're staying off the back property line. So we'll they're, that window. They're, ac they're actually improving the back yes. by pulling it in three feet off the property line. Correct. And what about the driveway is another problem. The driveway will remain as it is. Same, same size. Yes. Would you be willing on, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Go for it. Would you be willing on the driveway question, the impervious coverage? Um, I, I walked past the site and I noticed that the driveway is, uh, is concrete. I noticed behind the fence is, uh, a paver, yeah. would you consider changing the all concrete driveway to uh, a paver surface to uh, improve the uh, the coverage ratios? It, excuse me, that that really wouldn't do that. Oh, sorry, Jerry. We 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 don't we don't consider paver. We consider pavers exactly like concrete. My mistake. I'm sorry. It's okay. You're going on. You're going on the right line though, because. You know, I was going to ask if they can take up some of the patio that they have to help that same point. Sure. What about pavers like they have over on Fletcher Lake where they're, they're hollow pavers and the grass comes up through them? So they're not completely impervious. And that would help as well. And a strip of green down the middle? That's what we have. Some grass in the middle. But, yeah, no, the one that Dave is talking about, grass grass goes up in between the blocks. Yeah, there, there the was uh, a number of homes that were built there uh, west of the lake. And they put in pavers that uh, are basically hollow in the center where the grass comes up. That's a 50%. Am I right, Jerry? That's a 50%? Yeah, it's about 50%. Doing that, they probably pick up the footage need, right? Well, I mean, it, it would make again, it would make a a variant situation uh, less strenuous 
if they were to do something like that. And if they were, and they could maybe straighten out the fence, they might be able to get a legal sized parking spot out of the driveway. I believe we do have a legal size. Not, not per the ordin town's ordinances. You're right. Technically, you can fit the car there. It fits. It works. So we're talking about the driveway, making it concrete strips. Mr. Volano, this is just for the applicants right now. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Strips or the block that's the pervious blocks. And I, I'm not sure, are you asking us to change the driveway or to change the patio or both? Okay, if I could, maybe I could help summarize. Um, either one would be a plus, but both would be even better because you're way over on your uh, percentages for impervious coverage. So you have two choices that you're looking at. One is, you know, to take up the concrete driveway and put back a ribbon driveway, which you've seen, they're all over the place. People do them everywhere. Uh, and then fill in the rest with grass. So that would help your percentage of impervious coverage. Uh, the board was also asking, would you consider that it's interlocking paver blocks or concrete with holes in them. And because of there's holes in them, when the rain falls, it actually takes water in through them into the ground. Um, a lot of people don't like those because they're hard to walk on. Um, but there's two opportunities that if you would accept those that might uh, go away to having, go a long way to having the variants um, approved. I'm, I mean, we don't have any problem with that. We really don't even have any objections to putting grass back there. We don't have any grass. So, I mean, if we, behind the fence, between the, the driveway, the fence, and the house, we would be willing to, you know, put a little lawn there. That would be fine. I just have like a, have a walkway from the stairs to the driveway. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, I think that would be a plus as well. But it's kind of up to the board to make, it this, make a call there. So you're making a presentation of combination of both correct well, i just would I, i'd like to be clear as to what both means what, what what would the applicant be willing to do if if it would be acceptable to just put grass between the driveway and you know keep a walkway up to the house and then to fill in what's now pavers and stones with grass that would we would love to do that Jerry, how many square, how many feet would that come back about? Well, <clears throat> you would need to come off the house about three and a half feet with a walkway, right, to get down to the driveway. So, it looks like it's about 80 square feet. That's just a pretty good chunk on a small lot. That makes a big difference. But, but then you'd have to transition to the concrete driveway. See, everything's a little off. So you'd have to extend it a little further up so that you can walk on concrete the whole way, if you understand what I'm saying. That or make a ribbon driveway on top of that. Um, they could, if they wish to, they could, uh, they could do that. Yes, you would need also you ribbons. need about four foot wide concrete ribbons, two ribbons on each side, so that the tires would roll up the concrete, and the the middle would be open planted grass. So we pick up how many more feet there? Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be quite a bit. <clears throat> That'd be about a four foot opening. That'd be about another 80 square feet. 160 square feet. You're probably looking at a, a gain, net gain of about 150 feet because you have to carry the walk a little further to get to the driveway from the stairs. 
the proposed stairs that are on the two-story addition. That's about eight percent to uh, decrease. Yeah, I mean that's pretty substantial if it's something that the property owners would consider doing. Yeah, we would consider that. Sure. Does does that not actually eliminate if it's truly eight percent, as the chairman says? Does that not eliminate the variance on uh, number seven? I don't think it's enough to eliminate it. Okay. Pretty close, but not there. Okay. Yeah, it gets you much closer. I'm good with that. May I speak, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Well, no, wait a minute. Okay. The, 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 the public has to have, be able to question the- Pub uh, Public has to uh, question Sharon and Brian. Anybody from the public? Hear none, see none. Ms. Brian, would you like uh, your architect to talk? Please, Mr. Sure. Mr. Rich Villano. I am here. Mm -hmm. if, we're talking, if we're talking about 150 square feet in reduction, and currently there's 1,350 square feet in impervious, we would be losing 150 square feet, and you would get that percentage down to 60 percent. Oh, see, so that's perfect. Very good. So I'm that means the variance could go away. We can work out a, a, a scheme, a plan with the strips in the front for the driveway and then grass and a sidewalk from the fence to the house. And it would go cover in the 60 feet, 60%. That would be approximately 60% on the nose, yes. That's great. Perfect. But the building is now going up from 43 to 46, correct? That is correct, yes. I think that's rather small compared that they gave back on the rent and the rest of it, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Great. Anybody else on the board? No, if I recall looking at the, the property, that the surrounding properties were very comparable in, in, in coverage and size. Right. And it's a tough section. It's a small, small piece of property, landline. It is very small. Would you like your architect to say anything else before his question? Mr. Villano, do you have anything else to add? I, I have nothing else to add. If, if the board does not have any other questions concerning the addition, or the location of where the rooms are, or the sizes, then I'm fine, yes. Anything from the board? I just have one question. Sorry. Um, how far back from the existing house, is there any backyard of any kind or? No, no. we have about two feet. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what that's I was existing. wondering, it's hard to tell on there, so. Mm -hmm. And that's existing, correct? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> The existing rear yard is 1.7 feet, and the addition will be 3.1 feet. So we're making it less uh, a, of a hardship because we're not lining it up with the back of the house. Correct. Okay. Anybody else on the board? Any questions from the general public? Any comments from the general public? <clears throat> Sharon, Brian, would you like to close the statement? No, I'm just looking forward to getting, you know, just putting another room on there so we can- Be here permanently. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. Ready for a motion? Make a motion, we approve the variance as requested, except that the impervious coverage will now be only 60%. All the other variances that are required, that are needed, should be included in this uh, application. Taking out number seven. 
Maybe you just want okay. to include that um, that'll be accomplished by removing portions of the patio and replacing the concrete driveway with a ribbon concrete driveway. Okay, I'll add that to the motion. Anything else? Time for a second. 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 Ms. Phillips. Uh, yes, I think that you came in, you were very flexible, and uh, it's going to be a real improvement. All those houses there, I agree, are small and then, you know, all that. But I think it's going to be a nice improvement for you. And, uh, you know, when it's rainy season, we all appreciate that little bit of extra saturation there. So good luck to you, and um, hopefully it works out well. Thank you very Thank much. You. Uh, Mr. Critelli? Um, I say yes. I think it'll be improvement to the neighborhood and consistent with what's in the neighborhood now. Ms. Burnell? Yes. Very exciting. Ms. Rosenberg? Yes. Mr. Afuso? Uh, yes, I think it improves the uh, lot situation, the impervious coverage, and it is consistent with what's in the neighborhood. Mr. Weed? Uh, I vote yes. Looks like a good project there, an improvement in the neighborhood, especially with the driveway adjustments. And uh, good luck with the project. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Mayor. I vote yes. There's nothing more really to say to add to it. And Chair Rosenberg. I also vote yes. And thank you for uh, accepting the perverse coverage change. Your applicant, good luck. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. Uh, thanks Thank you so much. much. Congratulations. Thank you. I make a motion to adjourn till June 16th. Most likely also be on Zoom. Yes. yes. Zoom away. Zoom <laughs> away. Every, Until further notice, right? Everyone knows. <laughs> Have a happy Memorial Day. Yes. Happy mm -hmm. Memorial Day, everybody. Good to see you. Hi, everybody. everybody. Back to work. Bye. Back to work. Good night. Back to work, yes. Good night, Good night everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Good job, Christy. Thanks. Yes. As always, you're a great hostess. <laughs> good job. Everybody have a good Memorial Day. Be safe, be healthy. We'll see you soon. Yes. Thanks, folks. Hopefully Take in a care. room instead of on Zoom. Yeah, right. Well, maybe July. <laughs> maybe July. Maybe September, July. I'll be lucky. <laughs> All right, good night.